keep moving things along since we have Attorney General Mills waiting in the wings here. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, I'm here to report on a meeting I had last week with the uh, U.S. Trade Ambassador, Ambassador Froman. Uh, let me give you a little background about how that occurred, how, why we were invited to meet with him. Uh, a year ago, February, 48 attorneys general signed on to a letter, I think I've given it to you before, addressed to the Trade Ambassador primarily focused on the possible uh, undermining of our ability to regulate tobacco and tobacco products under various provisions of uh, trade, trade treaties, both current and, and future trade treaties. Um, Forty-eight attorneys general signed on to that letter. We got no response. So in the, at the February AG's meeting, I suggested we resend that letter, which we did in March. We still got no response. Actually, we got a response, but it wasn't from the trade representative, USTR. It was from the National Association of Manufacturers, who assured us that we didn't need to be worried about tobacco and there did not need to be a carve-out for tobacco in the trade agreements that were being negotiated. I thought, whoa, how'd they get my letter? <laughs> but um, they're my, our newest pen pals. We got no response from the USTR. Well, so in February also, I started drafting another letter to the USTR and that letter, still in draft form, technically, um, talked about the need for transparency, uh, mentioned that they hadn't responded to our previous letter about tobacco, in which we asked for a carve-out of tobacco products in the trade treaty, so we wouldn't have to fight over our ability to regulate licensing of tobacco uh, sales, sales to minors, advertising of tobacco, and all the kinds of things that we do, that we, the states, do, under the Master Settlement Agreement of 1998, in addition to the federal, uh, federal government and their authority um, under various federal laws. So we were concerned about tobacco, uh, particularly because there had been some lawsuits in other, sta in other countries and uh, claims brought in front of ISDS arbitration panels by major tobacco companies. For instance, uh, there was one, I think it was um, Philip Morris brought against uh, Australia over Australia's plain packaging requirements. They require that tobacco be sold in plain brown wrappers, I guess. And so we were concerned about that. Uh, so the current draft letter that was is addressed to Mr. Froman talks about transparency, it talks about tobacco, and as other examples of the Concerns of the AGs, we talk about predatory lending measures that the states have adopted, separate from the feds, professional licensing standards. I mentioned to you before when I was here a few months back um, that the Conference of Chief Justices, the Chief Justices of the states uh, across the country had written about the possibility that trade treaties would in infringe on their right to regulate lawyers, God forbid. Uh, that lawyers from other countries could come in and because it would be a restraint of their expectation of competition uh, to, to be subject to licensing by the states, these chief justices across the country were concerned about licensing standards. So we threw that in there, licensing standards being a concern as well. Well, we still did, get a, did not get a response, but um, once Fast Track uh, started being an issue, we started getting calls from the White House. We hear you have a letter circulated. Well, I had 23 sign-ons at last count, uh, and I said, what letter? <laughs> and uh, anyway, they said the trade ambassador would like to speak to you about the letter. In the AG world, we have to have bipartisan support before we even circulate a letter. So um, I've been cohorting with Attorney General Wasden of Idaho, who's a 12-year uh, tenured Attorney General from Idaho, Republican. And we've been discussing this issue. So he and I had a conference call with the trade ambassador two weeks ago, uh, and uh, he, the trade, the ambas ambassador Froman and his staff were kind of concerned about the issues we raised, although he hadn't seen our letter, or at least not officially, because um, it hasn't gone yet. It's just out there in the netherworld. But he he invited us down to meet with him in person. Uh, I'm told by people who've worked in Washington that face-to-face -face is always best, so I quickly made arrangements to go to Washington and do a turnaround trip, and Mr. Wazen was down there. So we met with the Trade Ambassador last uh, Friday afternoon. He gave us plenty of time. We talked about ISDS. We talked about 
Uh, a lot of concerns. We talked about the prudential exception in financial services proposal. We had read they'd send us the model bit, model bilateral investment treaty uh, provisions, and I had some concerns about that and sort of the iffy and circular language about standards to be applied by ISDS arbitrators. For instance, they talk about uh, denial of justice, fair and equal treatment, but that kind of is self-defining. Uh, the minimum standard of treatment is defined as customary international law. I'm, I'm going, what the heck is customary international law? And built on, it didn't prove to be much of a handle there, much of a help. Uh, public health, safety, and welfare, what does that mean in terms of tobacco? Uh, well, to be short, Ambassador Froman was predi predictably cordial to the two of us. He was predictably reassuring, and he was predictably noncommittal, explaining in detail why they couldn't share a lot of information with us. At the same time, we made a pitch to expedite the uh, credentialing of Attorney General Zella, Greg Zella from Indiana, who uh, worked on the Hill for 12 years or so and who uh, was in the vice, was chief of staff to the vice president, Quayle, <laughs> long time ago, uh, and who was interested in trade policy. And he will be the new, our new representative to, what was it called? Sip IGPAC. IGPAC. IGPAC, the Consumer Advisory. Thank you. Advisory Committee, an advisory committee. And he will have secret passwords to get to look at some of these secret drafts of secret documents. Uh, and hopefully report back to us in a generic way without violating the law. So uh, <laughs> we, we did talk about some specific things, and my sense is they're not going to do a carve-out for tobacco, although we pressed for that. Uh, my sense is they were, even though I had read the model bit and I was very concerned about how it affects financial regulation, the one of the staff people, the lawyer, in the, the uh, his lawyer in the group, said, oh, no, no. The, the model bit and the, in the footnotes protects consumer financial regulation. And I'm thinking about uh, Rich Cordray's outfit and, our, and Will Lund here in the state of Maine and all the financial regulations that we do at the state level. She said, no, no. It, it, and I said, well, here's the footnote here. And it talks about providing for monetary exchanges between countries and protecting banks and other financial institutions. It says nothing about consumers. Oh, she goes, well, you're right, but we, we're reading it broadly. I go, can I see that in writing, <laughs> that you're reading it broadly? Because I don't feel well protected here. <laughs> they did, they, the, the Ambassador Froman said they were looking at <clears throat> focusing on three things, better defining the word expropriation in the treaties, uh, uh, making sure that sham corporations don't just leave this country and set up, a legitimate country leave this country and set up a sham corporation in another country in order to bring an ISDS arbitration or make a claim uh, against the United States or any state. Uh, thirdly, ensuring that the FDA has the ability to regulate tobacco. And I said, well, the heck with the FDA. The states want that, want to continue that ability as well. And he, see, it, he was uh, aware of that and made, made, uh, made uh, note of that. We talked about the ISDS, and he gave me the impression that there are a lot of different models of ISDS that they're looking at, but without being specific, I couldn't comment on them. I did talk about the, the nature, the, the lack of deference from what I read, and I'm not an expert, but from what I read about the ISDS and the uh, various decisions that have uh, uh, come out, issued so far in di different arbitrations, there's no little deference to state regulations. In the federal law, case law, and state case law, there's generally deference to the regulators and the agencies who, who are charged with enforcing the laws. They assured me, first, they assured me that there have only been 13 cases in which the United States has been brought to a, uh, to a uh, you've heard this, to a, an arbitration under ISDS, and that they, they, the federal government, has won all 13 of them. And I said, well, I'm worried about the next one. Because of Bill Kahn and because we don't know the language that's being discussed and negotiated, I'm very nervous about that. They also reassured Mr. Wazin and myself, General Wazin and myself, that they will take full responsibility for defending us. And I said, thank you very much. I just don't want to be in that limbo, though, if, if somebody feels that some state law or regulation is, is impinging on their expectation of a profit or their uh, ability to compete in, in the state of Maine for business. Uh, some foreign national does, brings that case. 
uh, I don't want to put our regulations and, and statutes in limbo. Um, and thank you for offering to defend us. But what is the role of the states in ISDS, I said. What I read in the model bit was, we'll welcome amicus curiae briefs. And I said, I don't want to be just an amicus, a friend of the court, a friend of the arbitration, when it's our laws and regulations that are being um, challenged. And they said, well, well, we'll we, we could make room for you, sort of. They, you know, so many, so many words. Um, and then I said, what happens if the federal government, if, if the feds have one set of regulations, and I was trying to give a good example, but I, there are many, and the state has a different set of regulations, and they are not the same, and maybe the feds don't like our, our form of regulation. We're not doing it the way they'd like us to do it. They'd like to do it. What, what is the federal government's role in defending the state regulation? And they said, we will defend, we will defend, we will defend. And I, again, said, it'd be nice to see that in writing. <laughs> um, so we talked about, and we talked about the circular terms. Um, we talked about the Bilcon case, and I think that that really is hitting them in the face. Uh, that, having happened just last month, or March, I guess, uh, at that the timing of that and the fast-track legislation is poor from their standpoint. It's a uh, not a convenient thing. Uh, we also talked about uh, sh forum shopping, from what I had read and reading the model bit. Uh, claimants, foreign claimants, corporations, uh, and investors would be able to pick a forum, as they did in BillCon, as you heard. They picked one, and then they picked another. <laughs> they assured us that um, there would be a denial of justice provision, which would require exhaustion of local judicial rem remedies before they challenge a judicial decision. That, that's one way of saying it. But the, if they don't go to a judicial, uh, uh, if they don't ask for a judicial remedy in the first place, it seemed to me that they don't have to um, pick, um, they don't have to be stuck with a judicial uh, uh, remedy. They could still just go directly to ISDS. Um, we also talked about, you know, because I got the impression they were still trying to firm up what kind, what form of ISDS, not whether they, they're backing ISDS, but what form of ISDS uh, they were uh, going to pursue. And uh, General Wazin and I threw out the idea of an international court as opposed to these random sort of, uh, random, but uh, sort of self-selecting arbitration panels which we complain would have no, no binding precedent. Uh, the individuals would be selected like an ordinary arbitration, one by one party, one by the other party, and the, and the third one by the two, two others, but with no necessary deference, no precedent-setting uh, decision-making, and no appeals. Uh, whereas if you had a separate court of appeal, sort of international court to deal with these issues, you would have a set group of uh, individuals serving in a quasi-judicial capacity to make those decisions. Anyway, just one thing we threw out as a fallback kind of thing. He's, he claimed that, um, that a number of lobbyists for environmental causes and whatnot were against that because they didn't want the precedent-setting uh, uh, process to occur. I, I haven't confirmed that uh, one way or the other. We also, because uh, we talked about Bill Kahn, uh, and they said that, well, I think the, 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 the take on that was, if we had argued it, we would have won. Is that what they told you, too? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and there's the, the Apotex case. Are you familiar with that Apotex case? They said they had a similar issue, uh, which they won. They got the opposite result than the result Canada got in Bill Kahn. Good morning, Representative Hickman. Um, they also claimed that we were concerned about co companies' expectations being a litiga litigable uh, uh, issue, and they said that expectations would not be a just justiciable claim under ISDS. Um, and they talked about some of the cases that they had won. They claim that ISDS is, is part of some, I think, 80 or so treaties now, and why they didn't say so explicitly, they seem married to the idea of some form of arbitration uh, because they're concerned that other countries, um, they're concerned about Vietnam 
uh, adopting labor regulations that will bring them up into the 20th and 21st century. They're concerned about bringing up other countries, the baseline issue. Um, so the way we left it, uh, the letter is still there. It's still in draft. It hasn't been delivered. Uh, Represent uh, Attorney General Wazdin and I agreed that the trade representative could, uh, could have a conference call. We would afford him a conference call with other interested attorneys general as early as possible. Ambassador Froman is in Asia this week. I think they have a round of negotiations going on on TPP. Uh, and so hopefully early next week we'll do that conference call uh, and uh, then deliver the letter. Thank you very much. Any questions for the Attorney General? Any comments? Seeing none. And oh, um, Mr. Case. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Case. Thank you. Um, any uh, real discussion about the fast track issue and, um, you know, where we are or where the president is with uh, trying to push fast track and how this is going to um, impact I didn't all discuss of us. that with, with Mr. <coughs> Froman, with Ambassador Froman, uh, because I had discussed it with some of the senators as well. And I, I think it's well known where, where that's at. I did talk to a senator, not one of ours. Um, in another state who used to be an attorney general, so I know her fairly well. And she said she was proposing an amendment to a T TPA, and I don't know the nature of that amendment. But Senator Collins? No, oh. not one of ours. Oh, not one of sorry. ours. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Any other questions? And uh, House members have to go. I guess there's a, an important vote. That yeah. they Quorum call. Oh, veto override. Yeah, so yeah. they're off. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll keep you informed. Uh, we had a you know robust discussion. He gave us all the time we wanted with him, and I think, you know, he was very apologetic for not responding to our previous letter. <laughs> oh, and I hand delivered to him the 2014 Maine Citizen Tra Trade Policy Commission report and the 2012 report. And I said, I'm sure you have these somewhere, but I want you to have <laughs> my autographed copy. And, and likely memorized. Yes, right. <laughs> Mint green works really well on you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Very uh, spring-like today. Yeah, and, and I did bring up the dairy price supports. I said, as a for instance, the state of Maine is particularly concerned about dairy price day. supports. And GMO labeling, uh, which yeah. is important to some European. <laughs> Susie leaves the room. GMOs. <laughs> which a few states have uh, in, in their statutes now. Uh, and, of course, there's a federal court decision in Vermont last week, which might cause, bring some attention to that, so. Okay, any other questions? Well, seeing none, I guess, um, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and I got this lovely book. He has plenty of these in the office. It's very colorful. In your office? No, no. Oh, in his. Ambassador Froman's office. <laughs> Maine gets a page, nice. Oh, that every state gets a page. This is pretty high quality. Probably. You never know when we're a small state. We <laughs> could just get lumped <laughs> in with all the others. 